Live Animal Trades, and this is my friend Joel. Hi, I'm Joel. Joel Telling is the 3D printing nerd. And before we get started, I would like to give a huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this channel and this video and for giving me a easy to use platform to host my website on for the last five years. Joel yes. is going to help me fix a problem that I have. I've been collecting Playmobil toys since I was five years old. I have my childhood Playmobil set and it has a broken piece and my friend Joel offered to print it. Yoink. Train Boy must be happy to get his train car back. I know, he's not been able to ride for so many years. I don't know if you can get, but like just this little click is all that needs to happen. That's cool. And because that has that little spring in it, that's what gives it that, that flex that it needs. Oh. And now it's fully on there. Ooh, buddy. Oh my gosh. So Joel's offered to give us a quick introduction about these printers, what they can do, and bonus, we are going to print some stuff together and hopefully you can learn along with me about all the amazing things that these things can do. But well, one can help, fingers crossed. Let's get started. So if someone wants to learn more about 3D printing, do you have some information <laughs> about this on your channel? I do. You can find me on YouTube. If you look up 3D Printing Nerd, that's where you'll find me. I also have a website, the3dprintingnerd.com. And if you go on the Twitters or the Instagrams, I am at Joel Telling. Perfect. Okay. okay, so we actually originally were talking about doing something else together for this video, but as usual, I got distracted. She got However, really distracted. In our extreme distract, extremely distracted state, I actually came up with the real reason that I really want to learn how to do 3D printing because my truck, um, the 53 Chevy that you may have seen in the background of some of my videos, hint, hint, uh, is missing some of its decals. And I was looking online and it turns out you can 3D print these decals. And Absolutely. we also have another mutual friend who can make them look extremely metallic. That's right. So, can you tell me, like, how this works. A 3D printer is essentially a robot with a glue gun on the end of an arm. So is it like a CNC router? It's exactly like a CNC router. Except it adds it instead of taking more, away. it has more height to it. Okay. The 3D printing is a layering technology. Everything yep. is built upon layers. Yep. One of the reasons why people like 3D printing is because if you're doing it layer by layer, you can build things that other manufacturing methods can't build. Tell me, for someone like me who doesn't know anything about technology, uh, and who is very good at getting cat prints all over your toys. What kind of doors is this machine gonna open for me? What 3D printing is going to allow someone such as yourself to do is to quickly prototype a design before committing it to a more expensive or time consuming medium. Sure. So as an example, you could, you could use 3D printing to make a bracket that mm -hmm. attaches something to something else. Maybe you'll eventually make it out of a wood or, or a metal mm -hmm. just for strength or rigidity, but being able to take a model created in a few hours in this and then decide if you want to invest the time in a more expensive or more time consuming material, you get to do that. That's one of the, that is one of the main reasons that people such as yourself who are going to have 3D printing. You know, typically when you look in a wood shop, a 3D printer isn't a tool that you would see here. But right. a long time ago, a CNC router was also not a tool you would see in a typical workshop. Totally, and, so and now they're all over the place. What's really great about these new digital fabrication methods is they are tools just like anything else. Mm -hmm. And if you can find a way to use it in your workflow to improve your workflow, it's a really good idea and you'll be well supported by a wonderful community. Sweet. I see that there's no computer present. That's right. How does it know what to do? There's a couple different ways you can do this. Yeah. Sometimes if a computer is present, you can plug a USB cord into it okay. and print via what we call tethered, meaning it's oh, tethered, tethered to the computer. To, yeah, yeah. Yep. We know this from camera work, which I've also just learned this year. Thanks YouTube. There's also wireless ways of doing it. A control board can be added to this that allows it to connect to your Wi-Fi network. Okay. And then through a web browser, you would be able to send it files to print and start the print. Okay. Uh, but typically what we do is we print with an SD card. Oh, where'd that even come from? A little slot oh. on the side. Amazing. If I uh, have this correctly, we're going to print an alpaca shaped cookie cutter. Absolutely. Is that right? That's okay. the plan. So is the file already in the SD card? Yes, it is. Okay. 
So first what you want to do is you want to power it on. That little power button on the side, flip that up and you should see the screen light up. This is the firmware starting up on the little Arduino that's in this little box here. Boop, 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 this boop. is a dial that turns one way or the other, <laughs> clockwise or anti-clockwise. For what? Well, there's this menu. Oh, for the buttons. Yeah, okay. so if you turn it <laughs> clockwise, it goes through. Oh, And if you turn it anti-clockwise, yeah, there's a bunch of things. So this info screen, this oh. very thing, it tells you the temperature of the hot end and it tells you the temperature of the bed. Certain materials require certain temperatures. Okay. And they require the bed to be of certain temperatures as well to hold it in place. So what I want you to do right now, uh, click in on that button. Boop. Twist it down until you get to print from SD, meaning print from the SD card and click it. Boop. And then go to where it says PLA because that's the material we have loaded and hit that. It's gonna be the alpaca cookie cutter. Oh yeah. There are a couple different alpaca things on here. Uh-oh. So there we go. So you can see right here, everything is in centigrade and 3D printers use uh, metrics. So millimeters and, and centigrade is the way to go. So if I'm using weed whacker filament, <laughs> what, <laughs> what settings do I want to use? Typically, weed whackers use nylon. Yeah. And nylon usually melts between 250 and 270C. Awesome. Have you made something using a weed whacker yet? No, it is possible though, because you just need filament that's the same diameter oh, of, sure. of that. Oh, yeah. sure. Um, obviously, our next project will be incorporating weed whacker. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. We're finding out that my shop is very, very poorly heated. Um, I obviously didn't get in here early enough to start the fire. So this is, the bed's gonna get to 60C. The nozzle right here that's gonna melt the plastic is gonna get to 215C. So we're, we're dealing with very hot temperatures. Don't touch that when it's that hot. You will burn yourself like I have many times. Is it like, there's like a little string coming down. Is it leaking? No, the little string is, is just an ooze. So as this is heating up, the filament that's existed in this little nozzle right here, Yep. it's gotta go somewhere if it's melted and sure. there's a hole it's going to slowly ooze out we can well here you go ahead and pull it off there you go oh wow look at that yep is the i mean this whole machine it seems like i mean not the whole thing but like a lot of the parts are made out of plastic how does the plastic not melt if the if there's so much heat also are these things flammable like has there been house fires caused by these yes poor quality printers have been the cause of houses catching on fire huh Probably significantly less of an issue than my nacho burning, though. You are equitable. Hmm. What it's doing now is it homed, because there's X and Y, and Z is the axis that goes up and down. So it homed X and Y, it homed Z, and now it's doing a procedure where it checks the level of the bed. Oh, sure. So it wants at the X and Y plane to be on the same level as the bed. Right. So does it have like self-leveling feet or something? or It does has the... a little induction probe. And it knows how far away it is from the metal of the Whoa. bed. Whoa. So it's basically like saving all that information. It, it saves it off and it creates what's called a mesh grid. Ah. Uh. Now it's going to come down and it's going to start spitting out filament to prime the nozzle. Okay. And then it moves over and now it's printing. Have you ever looked into um, potential ill effects of breathing these plasticky fumes? That is crazy enough, a controversial subject because some people like to spread fear and fear say that it's a all thing. of this is terrible. Because oh my gosh, it's an alpaca. Sorry to interrupt. I'm so excited. Oh. Of, they say it's terrible because you're melting plastic and it's going to off gas things. Right. Um, like ABS plastics, the same mm -hmm. that they make Lego from. If you're if you're turning that up to a certain temperature and melting it, it's going to off gas. Sure. Uh, Was it uh, microparticles that you could breathe in? But at the same time, you know, cooking bacon means you're going to breathe in certain things more so than what a printer is going to do for you. In general, if you print with typical hobby use plastics like PLA, which is what we're printing with here, right. the chance of breathing in contaminants is very low. Plus, we're in a large shop. I would say it's well ventilated because there's a lot of air moving around. Yeah. I'm not so, I would be more worried about what your fireplace produces than what this printer would produce. This is incredible. So basically, is it just going to do this now, this exact thing for about two hours? You yeah, said it takes think, two hours to print a cookie cutter? Well, this says 34 minutes left. So we're printing each layer it's going to lay down is 0.2 millimeters. That's crazy. And it's quiet too, isn't it? I mean, it's 
silent. My whining dog and my cat. Okay, hello. One of the biggest uh, noise complaints that people get is this fan on the side. Oh, the fan? The fan itself is going to be the loudest part of the machine. So this is a fan by a company called Noctua that mm -hmm. does baffles on the fans in a very specific way and it eliminates the noise. What? A lot of people who build home use computers use yeah, Noctua yeah. fans because the computers need to provide a lot of airflow and be somewhat quiet. Are those scalable? Could I put that like as my I've kitchen got hood? In, I've got one in my computer about that big. How much home? air does it move? What's the a CFM? Ton. I don't know the answer to that. Oh. So it's a little louder now. It how is. This, how this works, it, this is an extruder. It's a motor with a gear that pulls the filament down and it pulls it into a heat break. Mm -hmm. And so at some, there's a small little throat. There's a heater block and a nozzle. And then between that and some fins is what's called a heat break. That allows the heat to stay down here and it to stay nice and cool up above. So this fan is blowing air across fins to keep it cool. And the reason we need a heat break is because we don't want filament to melt up the path. We want it to melt at oh, the sure. nozzle and that's it. Mm -hmm. And then once it's out the nozzle, this fan blows air through this and it cools down the area as the nozzle's laying it down. So you want to melt the plastic and then you want to cool it down right away. So does, how much filament is this going to use for our cookie cutter? For a cookie cutter, this spool was originally 2.2 pounds. Okay. It's one kilogram. Yep. And out of that, we can get a few hundred full-size chess pieces. And the oh, you can make chess pieces? Oh, yeah. That's one of my next projects. Uh -oh. That's one of my next projects is a 3D printed chess set. How about my chess board that I have inside? I didn't know you had one. I should just leave this here for you to play with. Oh, no, 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 no. My cats would <laughs> they destroy They would have a good time it. with it. <laughs> so You'd just come in here and there'd be filament all over the floor. This uh, usually costs, PLA plastics will cost anywhere between $10 for a kilogram up to 30, 40, 50, depending about the additives that are in it. Sure. Because when we talk about something like Wait, this. Wait, how much? I already forgot. $10? Oh, 10, 10 to 40 or 50. Okay. For a kilogram. So when we talk about something like this, this is metal. Yep. And it would go on the outside of a truck, yep. a really nice truck. So if you're going to print this out of plastic, you'd have to use plastics that have enough additives to combat the UV of the sun. Oh, sure. And to exist outside where the temperatures vary a lot colder and a lot hotter. Mm -hmm. They make plastics that are heat treatable and you can anneal them in an oven. So you bake it for 20 minutes. It realigns the crystalline structure. The same way that you'd anneal like a blade. The same way. Actually, Joel, I just have to let you know that you made my mom's week because- Why is that? She, I was telling her yesterday what we were going to be doing today. And she was nearly brought to tears out of happiness because she said that she's been looking for an alpaca Christmas cookie cutter for me for a very long time. And uh, we kind of like Christmas in my family, which you may or may not find out <laughs> shortly. This was a silhouette of an alpaca. And I brought it into modeling software and I just extruded certain heights. And that was it. That's what it takes to make a cookie cutter. Uh, you really are a nerd. It's amazing. <laughs> so, for example, if I were to provide you with some photos of my donkeys, could they become cookie cutters as well? Absolutely. Oh, my. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> well, this is really exciting. Um, this is kind of cool. And it looks like the timing is right. So it'll be about 29 minutes before this is done. Do you want to go pet some alpacas while we wait? Several bad puns later. Oh. There we go. Oh. Just like that. And now it's done. Oh my gosh. That's it. Pretty cool, right? I mean, you're probably a slightly desensitized to this. <laughs> Just a little the bit. The coolness of making a something out of nothing. But a this bit. it is cool. But you get to see, so there's the prime little spit out, right? And, yeah. and so what it does is it starts extruding here and it just goes to here to make sure that, that there's plastic flowing through the nozzle at a regular rate. And then it moves over and it goes so this is still hot, but if you want, we can take it off the build plate. This is removable. It's hot, but we can still remove it. So you can lift up from either corner and take it off. The whole plate? The whole plate. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, it's magnetic. It is. Oh, okay. So what's really cool about a magnetic removable build plate, mm -hmm. if you have something that's large and ultra flat and it's stuck down, you have to get some sort of, you know, pancake flipper or oh, scraper sure. under that to release it. So with this, when you have a big part, you just Flex it because it's flex steel. Oh, whoa! I just saw it like dis. I mean, I just saw it detach. Yeah, keep going the other. Oh, there we go. Oh my gosh! There it is. That is 
a very quickly made alpaca cookie cutter. Now, you pronounce alpaca differently than... I, I say it differently every time. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Well, I say alpaca. I'll say alpaca right now, too. Do you say alpaca? You say tomato, and I say alpaca. There you go. This is so cool. It is So cool. I think we should probably go make some cookies. I'd love to have some alpaca cookies. However, maybe we could do that on my channel? Alpaca my bags. <laughs> go over to Joel's channel and see us make these cookies. <laughs> I'll see you over there. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I've been using Squarespace for the last five years to host my website. I started in 2014, and if you know me at all, you know that I'm not a huge tech genius. And so to have a platform that allows me to just kind of drag and drop things works really, really well. Squarespace also provides me with tons of awesome analytics, which improve my ability to provide more relevant content to my audience. They have a variety of fantastic templates, which make putting your content into a visually appealing appealing site that much easier. You're able to use the Squarespace email campaigns to easily get in touch with your audience, which is also a fantastic tool. And it's super easy to get a new domain or to transfer your domains into a Squarespace format. So be sure you head on over to Squarespace for a free trial. And when you're ready to get set up, go to squarespace.com slash and of all trades for a 10% discount. And for the next couple weeks, I am also selling fluffy calendars on my website. I will also link that below. 